In engineering, one will encounter assemblies. An assembly is composed out of multiple components. Consider the wing flap mechanism. The assembly contains the triangular crank, the forked link, the angled link, two support tubes, and the actuator. Assembly components can be single parts, such as the crank and the linkages, but a component can also be an assembly. We call these sub-assemblies. The support tubes are composed out of a push rod, two connectors, and two nuts to constrain the connectors. Information is required about the individual components and about the way the components interact in the assembled product to be able to manufacture the wing flap mechanism. This information can be distilled from 2D technical engineering drawings. Two main types of technical engineering drawings can be distinguished, detail drawings and assembly drawings. Detail drawings always show a single part. All information needed to be able to produce the part is present on the drawing. The geometry should be fully documented, so the drawing is self-explanatory in the sense that a craftsman in a tool shop can manufacture the part without having to ask any questions. Detail drawings typically contain a lot of dimensions, section views and other items to document a geometry. Assembly drawings show the layout of different components in an assembly and their relative positions. Multiple parts are shown and the relationships between the different components are illustrated on the drawing. Only dimensions which are present due to the fact different components exist in the assembly are given, such as overall dimensions, fitting dimensions and movable part dimensions. These dimensions cannot be given in the case where a single part is documented. Any dimension which does refer to a single part does not belong on an assembly drawing. Such a dimension should be registered on the specific detail drawing. Every technical drawing contains a frame and a title block. The frame delimits the drawing. All drawing items are present within the frame, so do not intersect geometry or dimensions with the frame. Letters and numerals are placed in the frame to address a certain location on the drawing. Imagine you are on the phone with the tool shop to speak about detail view B of the push rod drawing. This detail view is located at section A2 on the detail drawing and you can refer to it using the section reference to locate it on the drawing. The title block is located at the right bottom corner of any drawing. It contains information about the shown object, such as name, drawing number, which in this case is the file name of the 3D model used to produce the drawing, who created the drawing, the checker, date, paper size, scale and revision of the drawing. Often the projection method used is indicated using the corresponding symbol. The right bottom corner of the drawing is not a random choice. European engineers make their drawings on sheets sized according to the DIN-A system. The base of this system is an A0 sheet, which has an area of one square metre. Half of the A0 gives an A1 sheet, half of the A1 gives an A2 sheet, half of the A2 gives an A3, and half of an A3 sheet gives the common A4, which is the standard size used for printed documents. A standard for folding these sheets has been agreed upon. Using this standardised way of folding, the horizontal direction is folded in a zigzag manner to the size of the A4 width and subsequent zigzag folding the vertical direction to the height of an A4. This means that any drawing in the DIN A paper system will have the title block at the front of the folded A4 sized drawing. Folded drawings can be stored in a binder for A4 sized documents and with folding, whether the drawing is an A0 sheet or an A4 sheet, the title block is always present at the front of the drawing using this standard. Assembly drawings often contain a bill of material. This term is used a lot in engineering and is usually referred to as the BOM. In the bill of material, or BOM, all items shown on the assembly drawing are listed. Usually numbers are shown in balloons at one of the assembly drawing views. For this purpose, sometimes a special view is created where all components of the assembly are shown in a 3D projection. The components are shown with a small offset from their final assembled position in such a way that every component is clearly visible in the view. A view like this is called an exploded view. 
Balloons with numbers can be used in the exploded view to number the parts and components, but other views can also be used for the placement of the balloons. The numbers in the balloons comply to the numbers in the bill of material. Next to the numbers, the bomb contains information about each component. The quantity is shown, so if a component is present multiple times in the assembly, this will be shown in the table. The part number is shown. In the case of the wing flap mechanism, the part number is identical to the drawing number and the file name of the 3D model of the components. The type column shows whether the component is an individual part or a sub-assembly. The nomenclature column shows the nomenclature name of the part. Next to these items, other information can often be found in the bomb, such as the material a part will be made from, the main dimensions of the part, and other relevant details about the component. Consider the hard-copied drawing set of the wing flap mechanism. Suppose we need to review the hole size in the connectors. If we open the binder, the front drawing is the main assembly drawing, in this case, the wing flap mechanism drawing. Due to the fact the bomb is present right above the title block, there is no need to unfold the A1 sheet. All assembly components of the wing flap mechanism are shown in the top part of the bomb. The fourth component in the bomb is the support tube assembly. The second part of the bomb shows the support tube assembly components, with the connector listed as the first component. We can see the fact that the connector is present twice in the sub-assembly and we can see the part number. We know that the drawing number is identical to the part number, so we start looking for the title block showing the drawing number in the binder. The connector is documented on an A4 drawing with the hole shown at the front view in section D3 on the sheet. The hole has a 10 mm diameter. Let us review the wing flap mechanism drawings again. The hierarchy of the drawing system should be clear now. The main assembly is documented on the assembly drawing. The layout of components and their relation is illustrated on the drawing. Next to the 1 to 1 front view, two 1 to 5 scaled views are presented, showing the folded and extended positions of the mechanism. Balloons are shown at the exploded view, which is presented next to the normal isometric view, which gives a good 3D impression of the assembled product. The assembly contains individual parts and sub-assemblies. The individual parts are documented in detailed drawings. In some cases, common parts like fasteners or other standard components are part of the assembly. In such a case, no detailed drawing is present, and instead of a drawing number, a supplier's article number is given in the bomb, such as for the M8 nuts in the pushrod sub-assembly. The pushrod subassembly has its own assembly drawing, showing the layout and relationships between the subassembly components. The bomb with references to the subassembly components is given on the right, just above the title block of the drawing. In summary, all the information required to manufacture the individual parts is registered on the detail drawing. All the information required to assemble the parts into the final product are documented on the assembly drawing. <laughs>